This is the story on how I refinished a $20 dresser that I got from Facebook Marketplace and flipped it for a profit. Before we get started, I'd like to welcome you to the video and invite you to subscribe to Slay Art Refinishings. Every Sunday at 7 p.m., I upload a brand new furniture video. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and found value in it. Without further ado, let's get started. So I got this dresser on April 19th, 2023, a couple months ago now. And as soon as I saw it online, I knew exactly what I wanted to do to it. And that was to paint it a light green color. I've done one other light green color in the past and I've been wanting to do another one. So this was the dresser to do it. I don't know what made me specifically want to do it, but I knew it had to be green. My first order of business was peeling off this metal or aluminum top that was on top of the dresser. And once I peeled that off with a hammer, that did expose some particle board, which I need to sand down with 60 grit sandpaper. After I was done with that, my next order of business was to figure out why some of the drawers were sagging. And I found that some of the drawer bottoms were missing this small little brown piece that kind of held the dresser drawers up from dragging on the bottom of each one of the little cubbies that it would slide in and out of. So I thought of the idea to put little white pushpin tacks in place of those to help the drawers slide in and out a little easier. And it did actually work. There was a little bit of room in the dresser to put the tacks in and raise those drawer bottoms up. So then the drawers would slide in nice and easy. I was super proud of myself when I discovered that this worked and I was pretty amazed and shocked. So we fixed that problem. Next order of business was to sand down the top of the dresser again with 60 grit sandpaper and work on that particle board top, try and smooth it out and get rid of a lot of the tiny, tiny little pinholes. Here's some footage of me talking about it underneath that and it's very rough feeling it still is a little bit rough it was rougher rougher before i sanded it with 60 grit now i'm gonna hit it with a 120 and try and smooth it out a little bit and then i'm gonna prime the top once i'm done sanding the rest of the dresser after sanding on the top of the dresser with 120 grit for a little bit of time i moved on to the dresser drawers and sanded those with 120 grit i cleaned them off with simple green and i wanted to try out a particular stain on the dresser drawers to see how they look. Freshly sanded. Right here, I wanted to try out some of the stain that I have and see what it looks like when I applied it. And it looks very orange, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do no stain and just seal the bare wood. Since I have to sand off that orange stain from that dresser drawer, we're gonna hop back over to the dresser for a minute. I kept sanding on the top of the dresser with 120 grit sandpaper and I did end up putting one coat of primer on it, letting it dry and hitting it with 120 grit sandpaper again. And I also did attack the rest of the dresser, sanding it down with again, 120 grit. To clean off all my pieces, I like to use simple green. And once I get those pieces clean, I'm gonna put them down in the basement and prep them out for sealing them. Next, something I always like to do is take some tin foil and place it in my paint tray here so I can always reuse the paint tray. After I cleaned off my whole piece with my simple green, I'm now prepping for my top coat. So I'll pour my top coat in here and I'm gonna use a roller. Just like so. And voila. Here's what I'm using for my top coat. It's the Beyond Paint brand multi-purpose sealer. I have used this on the past on bare wood. All right, we're all finished with top coating the drawers here for the first coat. This stuff has a one to two hour dry time. I put them out in the sun so they can cure a little bit quicker. Got two coats on these drawers right here for that dresser. While the two coats of the top coat sealer are drying on the dresser drawers, I started priming up the entire dresser with Kills white primer. After I finished putting two coats of the Kills primer on the dresser, I took my green paint that I got from Home Depot's Miss Paint section and started painting the remainder of the dresser. 
After I finished painting the dresser, unfortunately, about a month worth of time had went by, and I eventually got around to getting back to that dresser. I hauled the dresser down to my basement and put some Beyond Paint top coat sealer on the entire dresser. After I was finished with that, my next order of business was to work on scuffing up the handles to spray paint them a matte black color. I got this dresser here from Facebook Marketplace probably about two months ago now. It's almost finished. Right now, all I have left to do is to refinish the old hardware on it. Thought I would reuse the old hardware because I really like the look of it. It doesn't look old and it's real metal and it just overall looks pretty nice. And here is what I'm working with. I do think these look pretty nice and I would hate to throw them away. So I think they'll look really good in either a matte black or some sort of bronze color. But I think they will look the best in a matte black. What do you think? So if you have some old hardware like this and you wanna reuse them, this is how I would do it. What is most important when redoing hardware is to scuff up the surface of the hardware pieces. This one needs to be scuffed up and sanded just a little bit more. I have the other ones here that are pretty much done. They could probably be touched up just a little bit more, but the idea is to scuff up, rough up the surface a little bit. So when I go and take my spray paint that I'll be using, the paint will adhere to the surface of the scuffed hardware. Now, depending on whether your pieces of hardware is metal, wood, aluminum, generally if I have metal hardware that I wanna refinish, I'll go somewhere between a 400 grit sandpaper down to a 120 grit sandpaper, somewhere in between there. There's no really specific grit. Sometimes you do have to experiment depending on the type of hardware that you're wanting to refinish. But for this case, 220 grit, because that's just what I have on hand here. So here's what the piece of hardware looks like right now before, and I'm gonna scuff it up using some sandpaper. You can also use a Scotch-Brite, it's called. It's kind of like a wiry feeling, like sponge looking thing. <laughs> this is a Scotch Bright right here. I know you can get these at Home Depot or Lowe's. You can use it on wood, you can use it on metal, you can use it on aluminum. And of course, before you get started, you wanna make sure to clean the surface of the hardware that you're about to be sanding. I like to use a product called Simple Green. It's a all general purpose cleaner. You can use it on wood, you can use it on metal. Here's what it looks like so far. The handle here, it's a little shiny, it's a little scuffed up, but that's kind of what I'm looking for right here for the rest of the piece. So far, I think I've covered mostly everything I wanted to say. If you have any questions, be sure and comment down below. And also, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. My name is Garrett. I upload a video every Sunday at 7 p.m. I like to refinish and flip furniture for a profit, or I like to refinish these pieces and give them to my friends. So if any of that sounds good to you, please subscribe. Like the video too. A lot goes into making these videos and a lot goes into these projects that I do. Thank you so much. Here's how we're looking after about five minutes worth of hand sanding. Looks pretty good. It's not perfect, but the idea is just to get most of it scuffed up. Um, right now, I'm going to clean all these off with my Simple Green, and then I'm gonna stick these through a cardboard, piece of cardboard, and we're gonna get to painting here. All together, I ended up doing four coats of this black spray paint. Here's the spray paint that I used, and here is the end result. If so once I'm all finished with redoing my piece of furniture, what I personally do, I take my piece of furniture, I clean it all off, 
and then I take it down to the basement and put it up against this bigger white walled area that we have here. If you don't have a basement, a couple ideas for you for when you're staging your pieces of furniture. If you have a garage door, you can kind of clean out a little area around there and put your piece of furniture by that. So then it creates more of a clean and simple background and people will be able to easily focus on your piece of furniture. Another thing you can do is place your piece of furniture out in the yard and maybe put it on a rug or a tarp. The idea is just to have a clutterless photo make it really easy for people to sort of visualize this piece of furniture in their space. So once you have your piece of furniture in your desired area for taking your photos, what I always like to do is come over here to the Slay Art Refinishing Studio area. I have some props that I like to put on the dresser or whatever the piece of furniture may be. Usually I have a couple more, but these are just the spare items that we have laying around in the basement here. So got a little fake plant here. Nice, nice little, nice little thing going on here. Got a clock. Then we have some old books. So I'll show you what I usually do. I am not an interior designer by any means. I try to make it look as best and like as homey as I can. After I'm finished taking all my photos, I take the pictures and I upload them to an app called Photo Room. I don't always do this, but sometimes I like to blur out the backgrounds or slightly edit the photos to make them appear a little bit more clean and simple looking. Again, you don't have to do this. I really love this app, especially because it's free. It's so awesome. You can also outline the furniture pieces if you wanted to do something like that or change the color of the background. Definitely check out this app. It's available on the Apple App Store. I'm not sure about Android, but give it a search and see if it's on there if you do have an Android. So here are some pictures of a dresser that I recently finished. I have it up on Facebook Marketplace right now for $150. I did price it a little lower than I usually do just to get it out of here because I've had this piece for so long. This dresser started out with $30. That was the initial cost. I sanded the whole thing down. I stained and sealed the drawers. I primed the entire piece and then I threw some green up on it. Now let me show you how to post your pictures and everything up on Facebook Marketplace. Go to the Facebook app on your phone. If you don't have it downloaded on your phone already, do that. Then go to the little marketplace icon down at the bottom of your screen and tap on the little profile. Tap on your listings. Go on over to create new listing and select the photos that you took of your piece of furniture. After you do that, you'll put in a title for your piece. I always like to give a nice short summed up title. I like to put the number of drawers if it's a dresser, like three drawer dresser, six drawer dresser and so on. I like to put the color in there. Next is the price. I just put something down right here. Followed by the condition. I always put used like new. And then for the description, I just type something simple, something, you know, descriptive. And I always put the measurements up as well, because that's a very important thing. People want to know exactly how big this piece of furniture is, if it's going to fit in their home or not. So don't forget your measurements. And when I was starting out refinishing and flipping furniture and posting my pieces up on Facebook Marketplace, I always wondered if I should include whether or not these pieces have been refinished because some people have something against refinished furniture. I don't know what it is, but just from my experience of selling furniture, 
and all the other videos that I've watched over the past year or so, I do not include that it is refinished furniture. However, if someone messages me about the piece and that question does come up, I do not lie to them. I tell them, this is what I did. You know, I sanded down the piece with X, grit, whatever it may be. The piece was primed, the piece was painted, and the piece was sealed. And, you know, I refinished the hardware. I did whatever. And I keep it honest. I keep it true. I do not lie to them. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. A lot goes into making these videos. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to comment down below. I'll do my best to answer them as soon as possible. I want to thank you. I want to thank you so much for taking time. I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day for watching this video. And hopefully we'll catch you in the next one.